Jerry, I always want to sing like you. <laughs> but for some reason, God just didn't cut me out to do it, I guess. I don't know. You're too tall. Too tall. You think that's... <laughs> that could be it. <laughs> well, uh, on a little serious note this morning, let me uh, <clears throat> share with you, um, I'm sure all of you know that Miss Eloise uh, passed away uh, Saturday morning about 12.30, 1 o'clock, and uh, yesterday I spent some time with uh, Dan and uh, so what we're going to do is have a memorial service here at the church. She's going to be cremated. We're going to have a memorial service here at the church. But now they're trying to figure out what, uh, you know, just when they can do this. So uh, whatever it is, we'll let you know. And we'll, uh, I'm hoping he, he kind of indicated it probably wouldn't be this coming week, but maybe the following week. But whatever it is, we'll let you know. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be back with all of you this morning. God bless you. I uh, <clears throat> want to uh, bring you a little sermon this morning on homecoming. I, I recall the story of a young man who was called to his first church. And uh, the first Sunday he preached on baptism. The second Sunday he preached on baptism. The third Sunday he preached on baptism. And finally some of got the deacons together and said, listen, you need to talk to this guy. All he talks about is baptism. So they said, well, if we pick out a text for you, will you preach on that? He said, yes, I will. So they found the most obscure text in the, in the Word of God, uh, Matthew 3.10. It says simply that the axe is laid at the foot of the tree. So the next Sunday he came and before the house was packed. They all waited. He read the text. And then he said, Do you know why the axe is laid at the foot of the tree? So they can cut a path to the river to baptize him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm... <laughs> I shared that because I want to share a text this morning. Perhaps you don't hear too much of that, but uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 8 and 9. The Apostle Paul, who is <clears throat> uh, preaching to the church at Corinth, and he says to them, I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great door and effectual, and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, how thankful and grateful we truly are for this opportunity to be here in your house. And I pray, Lord God, that you'll speak to our hearts through your wonderful, precious, holy word. Father, this morning our hearts are saddened, and yet at the same time, we're glad that Miss Eloise is in heaven, in glory. Someone asked me this morning what I thought she was doing now, and I said, I think she's perhaps playing the organ. We thank you, Lord God, for the life of this dear saint, and we pray for her dear family. Now, Lord God, I just pray, as we come to, once again, think about what you've done here in our church. Now, I know that we haven't set the woods on fire. We haven't built a big, huge church here. But we have been faithful unto you, our Father. Oh God, I pray that in the days to come that we will truly be faithful to your wonderful, precious, holy word. My prayer this morning is this, if there's one here who does not know you as a personal Savior, 
that today they will open up their hearts and invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come in. And for those of us who are Christians, help us, O oh God, to remain faithful unto you, to serve you, be obedient on you until that day when you call us home. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, usually, you know, at the homecoming, a former pastor comes back and he uh, delivers a message, but uh, we don't have one. <laughs> and you're stuck with me. You know, but like, uh, you remember Henry VIII? He told his wives, I won't keep you long. <laughs> well, I'm not going to keep you long <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Let me just say to you that God planted this church here in Sun City Center beginning in August 8, 1999. And the mission of the church when we started was to be faithful unto God and His precious Word. Never get away from that. And to seek and save the lost. Now we have accomplished all that I prayed for in the beginning. I envision many lost souls coming to Jesus. But I want to say to you that it's been a hard, hard struggle here in this place where God has put us. <laughs> I've used that old saying, you know, many times along the way. It takes a, it takes a long time to grow a mighty oak tree. One young man said, yes, that's true. But an oak tree is a nut that refuses to give up. <laughs> well, maybe I've refused to give up. But God has put us here, and here we're going to stay. Amen. Paul said, I will stay in Ephesus. And stay he did until a strong church was established. I, if you know anything about the church in Ephesus, you know what was taking place there. It was a strong bed of idolatry, immorality, just about everything went. And he said, I'm going to stay. Now listen, we live in a hard place. This is a hard place to win souls. I know what some of you are saying. Yeah, well, we probably ain't doing all we can do to do that. Well, that may be true too. But it is a hard place. Because you know what? Many of these old timers, where's Pete? He likes to call them auctioneering and all that, you know, and what have you. But they are set in their ways. Kind of hard to change, isn't it? You can't, it's, it's just hard to change some people's mind once they get set and say, well, this is it, and that, you know, I'm not going to change. So. But we're going to stay. <laughs> we're going to stay. Listen, Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God started this church, and he's going to keep it going. Amen. You know what? I believe with all my heart and soul that we're going to stay here in Sun City Center and we're going to see some great things done. You know, in the Old Testament, <laughs> the, in the Old Testament, the, the Israelites were always fighting somebody, fighting the uh, Hittites and Jebusites and, and all of those other rites. But today, though, we're in a battle against the Bud Lights and hit that group, Core Lights and all of that, you know. Alcohol, living together, pornography, all of those things I just shared with you before I left to go on our trip. I shared with you those five things that we're faced with here in Sun City Center. And they're still going on, and you have a hard time of getting through to some of these people. I don't know where you, it, it's interesting. A guy just said to me that they listen. You know, I'm not married, but I'm living with this woman. What? Why? Well, he said, you know, this Social Security thing. I want to tell you, if I get married, I'm going to lose money. She's going to lose money. So we're going to live together. 
Okay. What do you think the Bible says about that? He didn't answer. But that's what we're faced with. And we're faced with pornography. I share it with you. That one of those five things among older people is looking at those dirty pictures. Someone said this morning, everybody's got a, a computer. <laughs> That's true. Just about everybody has a computer. You have a computer, you can see just about anything you want to. But we're going to stay here. Paul said, I'm going to stay in Ephesus. And we're going to stay in Sun City Center. He also said, there's a great opportunity here. Great opportunity. There's a great opportunity here in Sun City Center. Paul didn't know. You know, Paul didn't know what the church would become. And we don't know. We don't know what God has in store for Friendship Baptist Church. But we have, listen to me, we have a great opportunity here. There are thousands of lost people in Sun City Center. <laughs> and we have a great opportunity as a church to do some unusual work for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If we'll just simply stay the course, be faithful to God and to His Word, and do everything we can do to win the loss of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just, you know, I, I'm, sometimes I look around me, see some of the things that are going on, and I wonder, well, can the Lord really do anything in this place where we're located? Yes, he can, my dear friends, but he's going to do it through God's people. Unless you and I are willing to do what God has called us to do, it will never be done. Mm -hmm. Paul said, you know, I'm staying in Ephesus. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. He says there's a great, great opportunity here. Great opportunity to do the Lord's work. Thirdly, he said, there's many adversaries. Many adversaries. Paul had many adversaries against him. And we have many adversaries against us. Paul said, I'm staying though. Even though all of that's going on, I'm staying. We have many who are against us. Our number one adversary, of course, is Satan. He'll do anything that he can possibly do to stop us. He doesn't want a church here. <coughs> Satan wants us to close the doors. Right. Satan wants you to give up. He wants you to stop witnessing. He wants you to stop going. He wants you to stop teaching, serving, whatever. A lot of older people say, well, listen. I'm too old to do anything. I'm always reminded that God said to Abraham when he was 75 years old, I got something I want you to do. And he can still speak to you today and he has something he wants you to do. It may be just to go across the street and talk to your neighbor. Whatever it is, he wants you to do it, and you need to be faithful unto him and do it. <laughs> Satan will say, don't, don't witness. Uh, 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 don't give. Don't, don't be, get concerned about missionary. That you've been through all of that. You've done all of that. So I get excited about it now. Satan wants us to be like one of these cruise ships. You ever been on a cruise ship? Mm -hmm. Some of you have. Maybe. <laughs> you see, all my cruise ships is all about me. But if you get on board, you don't have to do a thing. 
They tell you, we'll take care of you. You don't have to do nothing. Just come aboard. You've got it made. Well, they'll serve you. They'll serve you. <laughs> you know, that's true of many churches today. And many Christians too, by the way. Just serve me. Just serve me. Just feed me. <laughs> you hear this from a lot of people today, don't you? I want to go to a big church. I want to go to a big church because they have all these, oh, they have all these great programs. Why, well, you can go there and you can listen to the great choir of 150 people. All of those sounds. I'm going to a big church. You know why they're going to a big church? They're going there to rest. They're not going there to serve the Lord God Almighty. I tell you this morning, you can serve God in a small church as well as you can in a big church. Amen. God has put us here, and here we're going to stay. Hmm. You know, Paul said, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. There's a great opportunity here. But there are many adversaries. Listen, when we started, over there in the Chamber of Commerce, we started, we didn't have anything. One man told me, you know, one man told me, I don't want to be involved in starting a church. I want to go where I can sit back and enjoy it. I tell you something this morning, dear friends. God did not call us to sit back and enjoy. God called us to serve. Get out. Get on. Get with it. Somehow, we've lost that. Well, Paul said, I'm staying. I'm going to stay here in Ephesus. There's a great opportunity here. There's a great opportunity in Sun City Center. But many will try to stop us. You know. But you know what Paul said? I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God. Put your trust in God, dear friends. It's the Lord who's involved in this. He said, I'm trusting the Lord. I'm going to stay. And he did. And he trusted the Lord God. He couldn't believe God would, could and would accomplish great things. And you know what? I believe with all my heart, with all my soul, that God is going to accomplish some great things through Friendship Baptist Church. Hmm. You know, we're told that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Think about that for a moment, wouldn't you? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right. We must have faith. Right. You know... I saw a cartoon, and I was flipping through an old time magazine over there in the doctor's office. <laughs> it showed these two Eskimos, they're fishing. One of them had a little bitty hole that he cut out in his line down in there. The other one, though, he had a huge, it looked like a whale that he'd cut in the ice. Which one of them do you think was expected to catch a big fish? Well, <laughs> we must have faith, you know. We need it. We must trust God. Not self, not money. <laughs> you know, uh, we don't have a lot of people in our church. But we must, if we just simply have faith, we must trust the Lord. Depend upon him. You know, uh, again, when we started over there in Shaver Commerce, we didn't have a lot of, uh, we didn't have many people at all. We didn't have money. As a matter of fact, the wife and I and another couple, oh, I just, 
the, you know, the Lord gives you a zap once in a while. I think, perhaps I'm wrong, but I think that, that uh, Miss Eloise was our last charter member. That was there when we started this work here 13 years ago. I tell you something, we didn't have money, we didn't have people, but we had a lot of faith. We believe that God wanted a church here in Sutton City Center. And we believe that he could do it if we were just faithful unto him. You know, maybe I'm wrong, and I hope and pray that I am. But it seems to me, it seems to me that when we got this property here and built this building, our faith began to wane. I pray that I'm wrong. You see, Paul said, I'm going to remain true to my mission. I'm going to stay in Ephesus. If it's God's will. You notice he said that. <laughs> if it's God's will, I'm going to stay here. And we must, listen, we must remain true to our mission. What was it? To love the Lord God with all our hearts, our minds, our souls. Love our neighbors as ourselves. <laughs> yeah, and even love our enemies. It's kind of hard to do, isn't it? Yeah. To seek and to save the lost. Sometimes that gets hard, but one of the things as your pastor for these years that I have tried so hard to do is to stay upon the bedrock, the holy word of Almighty God. I haven't preached from them books, you know, that tell you how to look better <laughs> and how to feel better and how to get rich. What I try to do is stay in the word of God and preach his word. Amen. Oh, I know I haven't always said it right. I haven't always tickled your ears. I haven't always got you to jump up and say hallelujah. Praise God. But I stay faithful to the word of Almighty God. The Bible is our bedrock. It's our anchor. <laughs> Whatever we do, we must it must be done in accordance to the scripture. Right. Wherever we get off of that, we're in trouble. And we truly will lose our way. You know, this morning, let me just say this to you. It, it's my prayer that if you're a child of God, you will have these same goals that I'm talking about in mind. You will want to stay in the Word of God. You want to be obedient to God. You want to do His will for your life. You will want to seek and save the lost and bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. All of us should want it. If you're a child of God, you want to do that. Sunday school lesson this morning is about the two men, Paul and Barnabas, going out to witness, to tell people about Jesus. Now, they took a long journey in order to do that. But they preached the word. <laughs> what did they tell people? They told people about the birth, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
They didn't tell them how to bid, buy a property or get some kind of soap or something. They told people about Jesus. And we must never, never get away from that. If you're one of God's children, you'll want to stay in His Word. You'll want to read it. You'll want to heed it. You want to do what it says. And you'll have faith. You know what? You know, it only takes a little faith. A little faith to move a mountain. Not many mountain movers around anymore, eh? Huh? Just don't see them. If you got the faith of a mustard seed, you can move, you can move a mountain. Oh, dear friends, we need to pray that our faith will increase. That was Paul. Hmm. He went on that first missionary journey. Did he quit? No. He went again and again. He didn't give up. He didn't stop. He didn't quit. He said, I'm going to stay in Ephesus. I'm going to stay here. There is a great opportunity here. There's a great opportunity in Sun City Center. Yes, there are many adversaries. But, if you trust in God, and if you have faith, ah, there's no telling. There is no telling what this church can really become. I think, I think, you want that as much as I want it. But I'll tell you this, neither one of us wants it as much as God wants. Amen. Well, if you're not a Christian this morning, listen to me. Admit that you're a sinner. <coughs> you know, all of sin comes short of the glory of God. So admit that you're a sinner. And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't mean that you just... Someone asked you, do you believe in Jesus? Yeah, I believe you. I heard a man one time give testimony. He said that he was 37 years old and he'd been in church all his life and he went to the same church and every time he came out, he said this little old lady would pat him on the back and say, you are, the, you are one of the finest Christian young men I've ever known. Every Sunday she'd do that. He was in a meeting one time and he heard this chaplain speak. And he said, whoa, the Lord just smacked me upside the head. I wasn't one of Christ's disciples. I wasn't one of his people. I've never been saved. He'd never given his heart to Jesus. Yeah, you know, you can go to church. You can go to church. You can sing in the choir. You can, you know, give testimony. But have you really, honestly, truly ever been born again? So to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ means this. Do you really believe that He is God? Do you believe that He left His throne in heaven, came down to this earth as a babe in Bethlehem? Do you believe that he dwelt among men? Do you believe that he went to the cross and died on that cross for your sins? Do you believe that he was buried? Do you believe that on the third day he arose from the grave? <laughs> Do you believe that one day he is coming again? Do you believe that? 
That's it. You've got to believe. A lot of people during this Christmas season, they'll say, talking about the baby in the manger and all that. Yeah, I believe. But they've never truly been saved. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess your sins. Confess your sins. Listen. Sometimes that's hard for people to do. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. All of sin comes short of glory. You know, Christians need to confess their sins too. We need to confess our sins of omission, commission, we, whatever it is. Every sin you have in your life, you need to confess it. Get it up. Let God take you. He wants to do that. And He will. He wants to save you. Why did he go to the cross? Why did he die on the cross? Well, he did that because he loves you. And he wants to save you. If you're already a Christian this morning, listen. You know whether or not you're serving him as you should. You know whether or not you're living as you should. You know, you know. You've studied the Bible. You've heard the word preached all day. You know where you're living right or not. You know where you're doing right or not. You need, if, a, if there's something in your life that's not right between you and God, you need to confess it. Confess it and get it out. Listen. Here's the thing about it. We love to talk about God. We love to talk about Jesus. We love to sing. We love to talk about praising Him and all that. The big problem comes, all is being faithful, dedicated, completely to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in a few moments now, we're going to have a Invitation, invitation here. If there's one here, Lord, who does not know you as their personal Savior, never been born again, oh God, speak to their hearts. Help them <coughs> to realize that they're lost. And they're lost and undone without Christ. So, Lord, this morning, I pray that they'll make a decision that will change their life forever. For Christians this morning, Lord, my prayer is that as we search our own hearts and lives, that if there is anything wrong, whatever it might be, and we'll confess it. And if we'll do that, you will forgive us. And I pray, Lord, we'll do that. Father, this morning, as we celebrate homecoming here in Friendship Baptist Church, I don't know what the future holds. But I do know who holds the future. So, Lord, we're placing it in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand. Sing. <coughs> An invitation here. Well, you, you guys are going to sing for it. Let's stand. I'll be up front here. Have some to see. You see.
whatever it is this morning, please, please be obedient, my Lord. You come. speed limit, she'd say, slow down, slow down. <laughs> well, you remember that, huh? Yeah. Uh, but listen, whatever that you have in your heart, in your life, you know, those things that you know that you should confess it, get it off of your heart and, and out of your mind, let God take care of it. Please do that. Please do that. Don't go around carrying it with you, whatever it might be. God loves you, and he wants the very best from you. Stay in his word. Be obedient to him, and he'll bless. And he's going to bless our church, because we're going to stay here. This is not Ephesus, but uh, this is something <laughs> We're going to stay here. And we're going to proclaim his word. God will do it. Thank you so much. You know, it's been a great day. We thank the Lord. Let me ask you to be seated. Uh, Terry, not you. I've been good. <laughs> okay. Listen, we're going to, we're going to take up an offer for these gentlemen. Have you appreciated them being here? I'm going to ask our uh, 
ushers to come forward here and uh, they'll take up an offering at this time. So get your checkbook out and write a check now. Don't, uh, Yeah. I'm gonna let them sing for their supper. I'm gonna have them sing while they're taking the offering, and then once the offering plate comes past you, if you need to leave, I know some of the ladies need to leave to go get set up for the homecoming dinner. If you need to leave, feel free to leave. But I'm gonna have them sing a couple of more songs after that for those who want to stay in here a couple of more, because I believe in getting every dime out of them. <laughs> <laughs>
big ships don't sail this way anymore. What's the use of it standing ground? Then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time oh, I saw the light that was shining from that old lighthouse that stands on Calvary's hill. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him. On Jesus is the light. Some that morning when the 
Slap me so.